Well, welcome back to the studio, of course. Orange County Supervisor Katrina Foley. Thanks for coming in, as always. Always nice to have you here. Great to be here. you got a lot going on. You have event after event after event. You're busy. I can't believe you came in and to have time to talk to us. Well, we <laughs> want to make sure the community knows about all the events. <laughs> yeah. So we got this big senior summit, which I'm sure most folks in our community will be very kind of excited to hear about. What, what's going to be going on there? Yeah, so we're having the senior summit. The 5th District is known for an annual senior summit, so mm -hmm. once I became the supervisor this year, I decided, well, let's make sure we have it. So we will have a little bit different this year. We're going to have the resource fair with all kinds of vendors. I think we have something like 50 vendors. Um, we'll be doing vaccination clinics for flu shots and mm -hmm. others. We will be um, offering a panel of speakers throughout the day. And my favorite is we're giving away tablets. So if you are okay. a senior and you need a tablet and you live in the 5th District, you can come to the, the Senior Summit and we'll have trainings on how to use a tablet. Okay, now where do the tablets come from? What, 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 or were they loaded with good information already? Yeah, so, <laughs> so each district office, and there's five of us, received 250 tablets that okay. we could give out to the community. And it's all part of our goal to reduce the digital divide and okay. make sure that seniors don't get isolated out in the community. They still have contact. and. The training part is what I love because we have people there willing to help the seniors uh, learn how to use the tablet. And we'll, we're even offering, if you have a smartphone and you already have you know, your digital device, you can come in and you can talk to one of our professional trainers and okay. during the senior summit, we'll have a little breakout room and you can get advice on how to maximize the use of your smartphone. There you go. My smartphone's smarter than me. That's one of the right <laughs> problems. Um, you know, the digital divide is a very real kind of thing because you have this whole generation of seniors who grew up without that. And it used to be a luxury. Oh, you can also do it online now. But then a lot of services are, it's only online. And you can only access. And I mean, I'm sure you still, probably still get writ, handwritten letters from folks in the community. You know, that's the way they, they're used to communicating. Yes. So how important is that to kind of like to get the seniors into that area? Well, there's nothing better than a handwritten letter. I actually still write I like handwritten those too. letters. Yes, especially <laughs> thank you notes. But uh, it is it is a concern, and I actually have a real life experience with it because my 96 year old grandmother, who will be 97 on November 10th, wow. um, yeah, she doesn't know how to use a computer. And all now of her doctor's appointments, if she wants to do banking, everything is digital. So we have really had a real life experience at home and that's why I'm also motivated to try to help seniors learn how to use their phones. I actually got my grandma a smartphone and I, I bought her a device that you can plug into the phone and it's like a handheld um, instead of you okay. having to use the phone up here because what happens is they push the mute button and you know or they call someone else and <laughs> and so um, lots of opportunities. We're okay. also going to have a whole bunch of speakers um, okay. and we're going to uh, conduct our master plan for aging survey. That's one of the critical okay. pieces of the day. We really need to plan better for Orange County's older Is that uh, kind of a population. part of the needs assessment that yes. we're talking about? Okay. Yes. So, so tell me a little bit about that and what's going to be happening with that. Yeah, so Orange County is undergoing a whole needs assessment of our growing population. So if the 5th District has probably the most older Americans living right. in it than the rest of the county. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a plan for how we're going to care for the future uh, population. We're expecting most people to be over 60 uh, within the next couple of 20 years, right? Yeah, and there's so much infrastructure that goes into that in terms of health care and assessment and transportation and all of those that's things, right? That's right. Recreation, mm -hmm. uh, caregiving, that's mm -hmm. a big component. Um, how do we take care of an aging population? So. We are going to be talking about that. We have a survey. You see the QR code up All on right. the screen. We're encouraging everyone. Um, and they have to know how to use their smartphones. Use the QR code. Open up your open up your phone. <laughs> go to photos and focus on that. And when we see the link pop up, press it. That's right. That's right. Now we will have uh, paper surveys at the senior summit, so we can hand those out. And we're also going to have speakers throughout the day. We'll have the Dale McIntosh Center for the Disabled and our Orange County Sheriff's Department talking about um, how to be safe at home. Okay. We're going to have 
jazzercise from your chair, how to stay healthy and active. Now we're talking. Yeah, we'll have uh, uh, Dr. McNeil from the uh, Newport Beach Dermatology and Plastic Surgery Center. She's gonna be talking about skin cancer prevention. And you know, here we are in our coastal communities, everybody is outside and you know, skin cancer is a big problem. And then we'll also have a women's health uh, as we age re uh, presentation from Dr. Brooks from Hogue Hospital. We'll have uh, Bill Liu from the healthcare agency talking about pharmaceutical health. You know, it's really a bad idea to cut your pills in half because you want to yeah, save money. Right. So we want to make sure seniors don't do those yeah, things. Yeah, we're going to make sure they're getting the proper treatment and That's they can right. afford those things too. Uh, you have an upcoming event coming up in Dana Point. You're going to be at your office on the 23rd? I am. Well, what I found is we're driving back and forth from Santa Ana and across the district. The district goes from Costa Mesa all the way to San Clemente. Right. And I want to bring services to the community. So we're opening a small little office in Dana Point Harbor and it's going to be there 10 to 5, Monday through Friday. If you need constituent services, if you want to like, meet with me, then we'll have a place for you to come. You don't have to drive to Santa Ana. Okay. Now, speaking of some of your constituents, the seniors, we have some veterans that are that are that you're, you've honored recently, right? The call, the call to serve rec recognizes the role of uh, a, a lot of the, what the seniors. Yes, the we're having our Veterans uh, Day, Veteran of the Year Awards. This okay. is our third year to have this, and we're having the award ceremony at the Dana Point Women's Club. We're asking for people to submit nominations for okay. veterans. And I'm really trying to highlight musicians and buglers. I've learned a lot about the role of buglers <laughs> in terms of you know, all the 90 something calls that they have to learn and how they really help to support our military service members. So it's not just to wake up and go to sleep? No, <laughs> and it's also like there was a, a, a congressional act to allow for there to be buglers and a color guard at all military service member funerals. So we, um, we're trying to recognize the role that, you know, musicians and buglers play. Then, you know, just broaden the, the support for veterans. You know, I've got to say, I, I, I've been to one or two uh, veterans funerals over the years. And it is, when the color guard comes and the buglers play, it is a really, that's one of the most solemn parts it of it. The, the respect that you have for that and the, and, the, and, the, and the earnest way in which they present that as well. Absolutely, and it's so, it makes it so moving. Mm -hmm. um, really does pay respects. And so that's it, and you can, you know, we have our flyer, you can <laughs> nominate people. Um, okay. And uh, you can go to our website or you can just call the office at 714. Eight three four three five five zero. Okay. Before we go, I want to talk about the Fentanyl Town Hall you're having. It's still, even with all the settlements, even with all the information out there, it seems like it's still such a major problem in our community. Yes, and it's a problem for all ages. It's really impacting kids right now, teenagers, but it does impact seniors as well because if you're trying to, you know, maybe get a less expensive opioid or some kind of pain relief medication, and you don't want to pay whatever it is at the doctor's office or at the pharmacy, maybe you're buying it online. You have to be very, very careful. Mm -hmm. Fentanyl is in nearly every non-prescribed drug right now. If you buy drugs from people on the street, you're going to get fentanyl or online. Mm -hmm. So be very careful. It's deadly. A right. tiny little speck of fentanyl can kill you. Yeah, it's amazing. Amazing what, what the, the, the impact it has on families and people. So it is. that's a great town hall for you guys to have. Well, Katie Foley, supervisor for the 5th, Futures yes. in the 5th. Fabulous 5th District. <laughs> Fabulous Thank you fifth. so much. Thank you so much for coming in. When we come back, we're going to be talking about some kickboxing. Stay with us. <laughs>